my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. As we step into the fourth Sunday of Lent, there is a great danger, there is a great risk that as we continue on our journey of this Lent in the year 2021, that we fall into the temptation or the pitfall of complacency. We get used to what we have been doing for three weeks and we somewhat get satisfied with what we have done so far and we feel like even without our knowledge sometimes stopping where we are. Fortunately, God is working through the Catholic Church and he gives us these beautiful readings that in a way shocks us from within and invites us to step one more step forward. To not to stop and get tired where we are. And that's why we have this difference in the liturgical color today and that's why we have these beautiful readings today changing the, the tone what we have heard through throughout the past three weeks. Throughout the weeks we heard God inviting us to do certain things to be aware and to open our eyes into the realities of our life. People and things and God himself to whom we are called to love. But today the tone is a bit different. God is showing his mercy and love and what he wants to do and his mind is revealed to us. His heart is revealed to us through these readings. If we take the first reading today taken from the second book of Chronicles, we listen to the, the conclusion of this book and there we find the humankind who has always been unfaithful to the commandments and the and the covenants of God. Beautifully this reading says, again and again God sent prophets so that people will turn back to God by the word that was given through the prophet. But what did people do? People made a joke out of the prophets, mocked at them and did not heed the word, did not heed the message. Therefore, the reading says God was angry and until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, there was no remedy. And certainly, one of us here would question, Father, you just said that we see a lot of mercy and love of God in these readings. Now, what has happened all of a sudden? Is God angry now? God has forgotten his love and mercy. What happened to his love and mercy? My friends, when God is angry against something, when God is angry or if God is angry when we are turning towards sin, that tells us not about his emotion, not the same anger that you and I experience as human beings, but it tells that God's passion to set things right. God's passion to draw us close to him. God's passion that we are taken into the heart of his own. That is his anger. That is what burns within him. That soul love that invites him, that, that sort of forces him to go after the sinner and then reach the sinner and almost force the sinner to come back to him. This is what God's love is about. God's love chases after the sinner till the sinner turns his life into him, turns back to God. And God did the same thing. Throughout the history, he tried again and again and again, but mankind failed. And finally, God allowed the consequences of our sins to remain with us for some time so that ultimately, God could give the ultimate solution. And that is what we see in the Gospel today. We see the beautiful story of this third chapter of the Gospel of John, 
where Nicodemus comes to talk with Jesus at night. Who is Nicodemus? Nicodemus is a Pharisee and he is also told by, by the, the beloved disciple that he is, he is one of the leaders among the Jews. Perhaps he must have been a member of the Sanhedrin. Even though he was a leader of the Jews, even though he was a Pharisee, something was moving in his heart to listen and to clarify things that Jesus has told before. There was something speaking to him in the words of Jesus. He believed to a certain extent. He was struggling in this. That's why he comes in the darkness. Perhaps in a practical sense, one might say, since he was a Pharisee, since he was a leader among the Jews, now if he went and spoke to this rabbi or this teacher who has come from Galilee, who has never been into a, the school or who has never been schooled to teach about Jewish religion, it would be a scandal for him to go in the daytime. But more than that, my dear friends, the fact that Nicodemus goes at night seeking Jesus tells us what is within Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a man who is groping in the darkness to see the light. Like all of us here. All of us here are groping in the darkness looking for light. There are certain parts of our life, certain areas in our life that needs the divine light. We need the light of God to shed into our inner souls and inner beings so that we will be illuminated. We will be lit up by the light of God. And that is exactly what Jesus is doing with Nicodemus. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and they go into a deep conversation where Nicodemus will see the beauty of the words of Jesus and see the beauty of what Jesus has to offer. Have we seen this beauty? Have we seen what Jesus has to offer us through this season of Lent, during this season of Lent? What is God inviting us to do or what is God inviting us to give up? What is God inviting us to transform and change in this season of Lent? Or what is God promising at the end of this season of Lent? Have we heard that voice? If not, don't be afraid. There is still time. And Jesus is inviting us to go forward in this reading because he is giving it in the end. Jesus tells Nicodemus, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now we need a little bit of background to understand what Jesus means by these words. For Nicodemus, this is very easy to understand. But for us, who are not so familiar with the book of Numbers and maybe we have forgotten what happened in the journey of Exodus, we need a little bit of a reminder. During the journey of Exodus, there was a moment that people of God complained and grumbled against God. They were tired of eating manna and the quail. And they said, we are tired of eating this tasteless food. And so they wanted to go back to Egypt. They remembered how much of good flesh and good pots of food they had in, in Egypt. So they wanted to go back to Egypt almost. And what did God do? Just like we heard in the first reading taken from the second book of Chronicles, God was so passionate and we see and hear the word anger there, and God sends fiery serpents, serpents of yellow color that bit these people and people died out of it. A number of people died. And as people were dying, they realized that they were ingrateful and they were unfaithful to this God who has been faithful to them. And so they came to Moses and then said, ask God to stop this and to protect us. And God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and then put up. So whoever was bitten by this serpent, by looking at this serpent, will have the healing, will be cured. It's a little absurd. It's a little strange here. 
Why would you want to look at the very image of the serpent who has made you sick? The very image of the thing that brought you some kind of a destruction, some kind of a pain and some kind of trouble. Why would we want to look at that? And Jesus says, just like the, the serpent was lifted up in the desert, so the Son of Man will also be lifted up and whoever looks at the Son of Man will be healed. The serpent that was lifted up in the desert is a symbol of Jesus who will be lifted up on the cross. So that shocking news, that same absurdity of looking into the serpent, the meaning of the serpent, why do we have to look at the serpent, should be a question even as we look at the cross. Why do we have to look at the cross? What do we see on the cross? What is there for us on the cross? My friends, on the cross we see first of all all kinds of sin. You name any kind of sin, it's there attached to the cross. Betrayal, isolation, hatred, envy, jealousy, everything is there. Any kind of sin is there on the cross when you look at the cross and Jesus on the cross, we are able to see that God who has taken all the sins of the world, any sin on the world is there on the cross. And Jesus not only takes all sin there, he also covers all this sin and also gives us the love and mercy of God through the cross. He actually transforms the sin into the mercy and love of God and then gives us the grace of God. That's why we heard in the second reading, St. Paul says to the Ephesian community that through the mercy we have been reconciled by God and now we have a way to be united with him through our faith. Our faith is going to unite him. So we look at the cross as a reminder of our sins and as a reminder of God's love for us, God's mercy for us, every time we come to Mass, there is a cross placed on the altar. Every time we come to church, there is a cross placed in front of the church. A reminder that we are sinful people, but at the same time, we are being redeemed by the grace of God. This is the promise that God gives us today. Even though we have failed again and again like the people of ancient Israel. Still, God hopes for us. God has not lost hope in ourselves. God still is ready to reconcile us into him if we love him and if we take that step in faith. He's inviting us to have that faith because he does not want an empty heaven. He wants a heaven where you and I, all of us can be partakers of that heaven as his own children, as his adopted children. Let us think of this. Let us bring to prayer that our need and our intention to be reconciled with God, the areas that are still in darkness, that God's light will illumine those dark spots, and that we will be more worthy to be called his sons and daughters, the inheritors of the heavenly kingdom.